Nelson. As the chairman of uh, <coughs> Defense Intelligence and Foreign Relations, I'll be directly oversighting you, Madam Soipan. Uh, in my two terms, if, if, if confirmed. If, if confirmed, I was going there. You guys are interrupting my, <laughs> my apologies if confirmed. My, my two stints in Parliament has allowed me to see four generals, as both as a, just a member of Defence Committee and now as a chairman, and three cabinet secretaries. And the biggest issue, <coughs> um, Madam Soipan, Honorable Soipan, has been the lack of appreciation from the civilian side of the military uh, units and formation. They feel that uh, the civilian side is overreaching and sometimes uh, overbearing. They want to, you know, by the time someone becomes a general, it takes about 35 years of hard work and merit. Every step in the military is merited. And sometimes because of us, you know, short, short, short um, stints in the portfolios that we get, they have a feeling that sometimes the cabinet secretaries or the civilian side are overreaching. What do you think he will do differently, Andre Basaipan? Hold, we'll take Naisula. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Honorable Soipan, in your previous docket at the Ministry of Environment, you are the forefront and very instrumental in the national tree growing campaigns. Kenyans and um, many of us were concerned about the amount invested in the various government officials, such as cabinet, cabinet secretaries who transversed the country in choppers to participate in tree planting drive. While these exercises could have been uh, conducted by the governors and the counties and our members of parliament and the people uh, at the community level. Now that Kenyans are very keen on austerity measures, what will you make sure, what will you do, and you first tell us what was the justification or what did you have in mind as a cabinet secretary to see all those resources spent on choppers to go and plant trees? The second uh, question is the issue of deployment of KDF in our homeland. Uh, we saw recently how KDF was deployed in inland or homeland without it being passed in parliament. And we did it the next day hurriedly, even without members of parliament deliberating on that matter. I would like to get your view on this. And also deployment of KDF in parts of North Rift, uh, parts of our country, and the true feeling on the ground is that they do not respond fast when they are needed. They say they have to wait for orders. And the questions the, the civilians and the communities are asking, then why are you there in the first place if you cannot be the first respondents when something happens, when the bandits attack, and you have to wait for, for orders from somewhere else? And, Chairman, the last question is that there are projects which were done by KDF in the last administration, some are complete, but payment has not been done. Will the payment, do you think there should be continuity in government projects, while others are incomplete, but two years down the line, they have not uh, uh, been embarked on? Do you think continuity should be there? Because there should be value for money. You can respond to those two. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. The question by the Honorable Nelson Koech on uh, the uh, probability of my overreaching uh, my mandate uh, from the civilian side and infringing on the uh, uniformed side of uh, the, the ministry, I can uh, uh, give uh, assurance um, to all the players in the Ministry of, of Defense that uh, upon my confirmation as, as uh, CS Defense, that uh, as I had said earlier, I'm very um, heavy on team playing. I'm also a fast learner, uh, Honorable Koech, and I'll have a lot of learning to do uh, in terms of uh, the military operations, the administration. And uh, in order for me to, to, to effectively exercise uh, my overall um, oversight, the overall policy direction and advisory, 
I will need to critically understand those operations without um, infringing or interfering uh, with those uh, very distinct roles of the uniformed uh, units of the ministry. Uh, that I can give assurance. I'm also very, very consultative uh, in my leadership uh, style. Uh, Honorable Naisola, um, the issue of tree growing in choppers by cabinet secretaries. Um, my main role um, as CS for environment uh, in the tree growing um, uh, activity was really coordinatory. And you will appreciate, uh, Honorable Naisola, that uh, um, the nature of uh, the ecosystem restoration program is that it has to have everybody on board, from individual Kenyans, private sector, and all government agencies. So it cannot be the preserve of even the Ministry of Environment, and that is why uh, we were very heavy on the whole of government and whole of society approach to the tree growing program. In the coordinatory role of uh, when I was CS environment, we did not make any provision for transport or logistics arrangements for cabinet secretaries uh, when they were exercising their, uh, you know, uh, when they were doing their ministerial activities around tree growing. So any cabinet secretary who traveled by chopper, by road, really it was outside of, of uh, my uh, mandate and, and scope. Um, and therefore, uh, I cannot speak to that. The only thing I can say is that um, during the second national tree growing uh, program, and having noted a number of concerns raised by Kenyans around um, the, the heavy presence of helicopters and uh, you know heavy spending around tree growing, um, again we address that at cabinet level um, and making sure that uh, the exercise was again very grassroots centered. The coordination by the uh, Kenya Forest Service and other entities at the at the uh, community or the grassroots level, or at the uh, forest station levels, and therefore, in, in terms of resources, I I had no mandate to uh, resource anybody to go out and plant trees. Actually, my role was only uh, coordinatory. Um, 